All right, so ladies and gentlemen, so here we are. This is the Slido features that we are going to propose to you. So in, in case if any one of you have any questions would like to ask any of the panelists right here, feel free to submit your question there into the Slido feature. So please kindly scan the Slido features right here before we proceed to uh, start our conversation. All right, sir. My name is Janet. I will be the moderator for the first panel discussion for today. And today we'll be showing to you, to showcase to you the highly anticipated of this topic, which is equip the CROs with a strategy game plan to avoid, to manage, and to mitigate the risk, uh, emerging risks. And today we are totally very fortunate to have four panelists together with us right here. So this sessions will be a 45 minutes followed by 15 minutes time of Q&A sessions. And right now, I would like to invite each panelist to kindly of introduce yourself by saying your title, your occupation, and your company name as well. So, can you proceed with Mr. James? Hi, everyone. Nice to meet you guys. I'm James Chi, sales manager representing Alexi from Watchful Eyes. <coughs> Services that helps you to monitor and safeguard the sensitive data from the company. So feel free to ask if there's any questions from you guys. Thanks. Thanks, Mr. James, and followed by Mr. Sharia. Serving Lembaga Tabung Haji, so it's quite easy to find Tabung Haji. Just Google Tabung Haji, you would be able to find the website. Um, you can check out what we are doing. But the name itself is Tabung Haji. We are uh, helping people uh, to save their money. At the end of the day, it's also about um, sending folks to perform the Islamic uh, requirements, uh, send people uh, to perform Hajj. And for the non-Muslim here, Hajj and Umrah are not the same thing. Okay, thanks. <laughs> thanks, Mr. Sharil. And next, we would like to have Mr. Jason. Hi, good morning, everyone. My name is Jason Goy. Uh, I'm the Chief Risk and Compliance Officer of Bank Provider Malaysia Berhad. For those of you who are not familiar, well, I hope everyone's familiar with Bank Provider. We're basically uh, a development financial institution. Uh, we recently celebrated our 50th uh, anniversary, yeah, uh, basically uh, involved in nation building. So if any one of you need help building a highway, yeah, give me a call. <laughs> <laughs> and next, Ms. Ngajani. Good morning, everyone. Um, excuse my voice, I'm just still recovering from the flu. Um, so I'm Gajani Raja. I'm the Chief Risk Officer in Special Projects with San Dabi Plantation Berkhad. Uh, San Dabi Plantation is basically the largest producer of sustainable palm oil in the world. And we operate in 20 over countries with a workforce of about 11,000 people. So yeah, lots of risk to monitor from our, our HP in KL. Well, thank you so much to four panelists right here. So today we are talking about this topic that uh, we are going to see how to manage to avoid and mitigate, um, mitigate the emerging risk. As we know, different companies, they have set different scalability goals as well. So, and as they grow, so do their operational complexity, this customer basis, the databases, uh, they are processed on a daily basis as well. So, which means, we have a lot of risk is coming in, okay? So what exactly is this holistic approach to dealing with all this kind of risk? So we will be going to dive deep into this topic and uh, to understand what it is, what it isn't, how it is helpful and how it gets started. So the first question I would like to refer to Mr. James. Okay, what are the risks that attack your business in 2023? And what are the consequences of this risk to the individual level in your business? So the risk that mostly the companies face is all about the insider threats, data breaches, like Hadoop, that kind of stuff. So 
in 2023 it is a good year that many things happen so that we offer a really great services which is DLP as a service we help you to do the daily monitoring prevent sudden threats and monitor the employees activity and productivity thank you all right next i'm going to have Cheryl to share about your perspective anybody talk about risk management because i'm also handling the uh, compliance uh, i'm sure a lot of you understand what compliance and risk management but if you're not it's not the same <laughs> why is it not the same one is called risk management the other one is called compliance <laughs> and it's not even an audit work I remember in those days back 10 years ago, people are confused what am I doing? What is risk? What is compliance? What's the audit? Please Google and you will be able to understand the difference. Uh, there are so many things um, I want to elaborate. So what I did this morning, I used the most advanced technology on earth. It's called chat GPT. <laughs> when I type Tabong Haji, so what kind of challenges we are facing? Oh, so many. And then compare against my reports. So there's a mismatch. <laughs> so what, what I'm trying to say, tell all of you, if you're trying to Google and use the chat GPT, not everything that uh, written there is what we are facing. But among the so many things that we are very particular, I mean IP risk, cyber security, tech, those are quite normal. But reputation. You know, one fine day, I wake up in the morning and there was a news about Tabung Haji. It's not even right. But you have to manage that. You cannot just simply try to re-Google or go back to the <coughs> social media to deny that. You cannot work alone. You, know, you need to have a strategy. So you start calling the team. Your corporate comm needs to know how to answer. If you answer too much, you might be in trouble. If you answer too little, you might be in trouble as well. And when you serve a company like some of the big teams in Malaysia, what you see meant the most. And suddenly there's another group of people talking about your answer. And you're not answering, they're answering on your behalf. So to have that strategy, long-term strategy to educate the stakeholders, and stakeholders could be a plenty. It's not just the depositor. Tabuhani is not the kind of a company. It's not even a company. It has its own act. Tabuhani Act 1995. With that, our establishment is not the way that you look at a company. But we have so many subsidies, which are companies. Okay, reputation is one thing. Even um, some corporacy with Tabuk Haji title, something wrong there, that could really cost you a lot of, I'm not going to say misery, it gives you a lot of work to do. Okay? Okay. On top of that, Tabuk Haji, we take people money, we have to manage that. Uh, if you are so used, I'm sure James also used to that, he's, from, he's a banker. I used to serve a bank so long. So, so the thing about money coming in, money coming out. So you are very familiar with liquidity management. So in the world of banks, you call it bank run, isn't it? In my world, I call it deposit run. Deposition, deposit. Imagine people start panicking and people start talking about you. They start withdrawing the money. You do not have enough liquid asset that will cause a misery to you. At the same time. You do not want to compete with the asset management company, with the banks, but your base of customers, more or less, probably will be the same. The major differences, you have to be a Malaysian and you have to be a Muslim. That's the only differences with the rest of the bank. But nowadays you have Takaful, you have Islamic banks. Again, we do not want to compete. We hope to supplement and support each other. But the way that people, ideally, originally, people put money because they want to perform haji. But of course, over a period of time, oh, this is a good a kind of um, savings or investment. Why don't we put more money there? When the, the moment that you build up your asset or deposit base, it put pressure. But how do you manage that? That's what I call uh, reputation and, and uh, perception. Um, on top of that, we are also exposed to ESG, or the social and governance part. You can talk a lot about the compliance, audit, integrity, but the environment, um, I'm sure Gajani will talk a lot about that. But we also exposed to the same thing. Climate change risk. We need to be mindful. Um, the world is changing. I remember when I was young, 
you know flight banjir it happened once upon a time okay lah it happened and we don't have to worry anymore now the team is even forecasting what is going to happen this year how many times banjir will happen which particular area what are we going to do i mean we have about 103 presence branches across malaysia we don't want our poor staff to sit on top of somebody's houses it happened for god's sake it happened if I'm not mistaken, 2021, some people had really stay on top of a roof and waiting for somebody to save them. This is outside the norms. Like I said, 10, 20 years ago, banjir is sekali sekali, once upon a time, but no more. Okay, and then um, we also have to be mindful on cyber security attack. I'm sure you guys have seen uh, what happened in one of the uh, government link. We don't want that to happen. And uh, we have to equip ourselves. It's not just about sending people to hatch our information. We have about 8.9 million uh, depositors. Not to mention the staff, the vendors. Le leakage is, is not an option. We try our best. We have to have the SLC, SIEM, IRM. There's so many reports. So CISO itself becomes so important in my world. I thought when I joined Tamu Haji, are there anybody from Bandara Malaysia here? <laughs> I would not see them again. I think two, two months later, I, I still see them. I'm not having issue with them, but I understand. It's a very big organization. The implication, if we pull out our money from the FI, there might be a system increase. So, the expectation, the demand, and the, 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 the watchful eye from the country itself put pressure to you. But you cannot just let it uh, uh, succumb you. You have to have a plan. So what we need is we, had, we put in it, uh, year in year what we think going to be the challenges. This year definitely uh, cyber security is one of the, on top of that liquidity management. Um, also about performing such. We're talking about sending 31,000 Malaysian outside there. You are dealing with um, folks from another country. Anybody from Saudi Arabia? So. Their laws and our laws are not the same. And they are talking in different language. Mm. Well, I'm sure that a lot of uh, Malaysian Muslims here can read our Quran very well, well, but their words are different. What you read and what how they speak is also different, the culture. So you we need to equip ourselves year after year. But the challenge continue to be there. And BCP, BCM, what happened if something happened? We need to uh, strike a deal with the relevant authorities. So the expectation continue to rise over time. Okay, I think I spoke a lot, but there's a lot more, maybe later. <laughs> Thanks, Cheryl. Very thank you for a very insightful sharing sessions about the, the reason in his company. All right, so what about Jason? Uh, okay, one of the reasons why I enjoy being on a panel is I get to say, Oh, Sharon did a good job. I echo everything he said. <laughs> um, but jokes aside, uh, I think Sharon, you touched on reputational risks. Uh, a reputation to an FI, uh, and just like Tabo Haji being an FI, you deal with people's money. Reputation is very important. So I'm going to be very careful with how I tackle the first question from Janet. Uh, the question actually is, what were the top risks that attacked your company or our companies in 2023. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm gonna modify the question a bit and I'm gonna say that we did not successfully got attacked in any form, but there were attacks. Uh, and this is where I uh, latch on to something that James said, it made me very nervous when you said, 2023 was a good year because many things happened. <laughs> and he's a company that handles cyber security. Um, but on that note, uh, as an FI, uh, I have to say that cyber security <coughs> threats have been right at the top of top risks, emerging risks of the banking industry, and, and we're not alone. Uh, most banks in the industry rank cyber security threat right at the top. So James, a lot more business for your company, don't worry. Um, of course, uh, new, new risks like um, ESG, especially climate change and, 
as Sharil promised you, Gajani is going to give a full session on that, and the rest of us are going to adjourn for coffee. <laughs> yeah. But climate change risks, uh, th this is also an area where I, I personally feel uh, that banks uh, have a certain struggle, um, and the struggle that we have, some of them uh, related uh, to what Sharil talked about, um, getting to know what happens to, to, to your customers. Uh, the areas that, that they operate in. But not only that, at the other end, um, we, we, we have a struggle with data as well. Um, so a proper understanding of climate change, for instance, as compared to a plantation company, banks struggle uh, because data is a problem. Um, because Banjay, when you talk about flood, right? If flood happens in Shah Alam, the amount of rain that falls in Shah Alam must be the same whether you get the data from one consultant or another, right? So that's just one example of, of the struggles that um, the banking industry uh, face. Yeah. Um, and of course, back to reputation, um, happy to note that my bank, we don't take retail deposits, but if there are colleagues, uh, friends of ours from, from commercial banks, I feel for you. Because any bank that takes retail deposits, um, that's that's one of the big, biggest fears. Because like Sharon rightly pointed out, you're handling people's money. Uh, nothing can go wrong. Um, and without mentioning any names, if you've, you've read news about uh, a certain bank in a neighboring country, uh, which was actually asked by, by the regulator to set aside capital because of something that went wrong with their internet banking. But that's, that's huge. When a regulator asks a bank to set aside additional capital for some kind of a gap, whatever it is, that's, that's huge. Yeah, so um, I, I feel for the, for, for the commercial banks, um, uh, but you're handling people's money, you don't have the choice. So if I had to, 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 to pick something, Janet, I would pick cyber security right at the top uh, of things that keep me, keep me up at night. So over to you, Janet. Thank you, Jason. So being the only non-FI panelist here, I think my perspective is going to be slightly different. Um, since uh, Sharon and Jason both said I'll speak about ESG, okay, yes, that is one of the key risks for our company uh, last year. And uh, this covered various aspects. From the environmental side, if it rains too much, it's bad for our plantations because they can't go and collect fruit. If it's too dry, there was a El Nino in, in Indonesia last year, it was also bad because uh, again, the, the, there's no productivity coming out of the trees. So finding, getting that good balance from the weather is something that we obviously can't control, it's left to the elements, but that was a significant risk facing us last year. Um, also in terms of emissions uh, from the environmental side, all companies are being faced with what they would call a net zero uh, ambition, right? So what we have done is to be the first company in the industry to come up with a net zero roadmap for 2050 in response to the fact that we feel that sustainability challenges and risks are very important to our organization. From the social side of things, human rights risks were also top of mind for us in the last few years. Uh, for those of you in Malaysia, you would, may have read in the papers that Sandavi Plantation was under scrutiny by the US for uh, human rights issues. Um, I'm happy to say we have come out on top of that, in fact leading the industry now in terms of the practices that we have in place for our migrant workers. So that's the ESG side. Um, top of mind for us really was also geopolitical uncertainties. Given that we operate globally, so when the war erupted in Ukraine, uh, with the Russia-Ukraine war, we had issues getting gas supply, which used to come from Russia into our operations in the Netherlands. So suddenly gas prices were sky high. Uh, with the Israel-Hamas war, we may not be operating in Israel, but we've got customers in the Middle East region. So tensions were, were high there. They were not purchasing as much. And, and all these wars are causing supply chain disruptions. 
right? Uh, you know, with COVID and then the wars, the, the, the consumer freight, sorry, the freight market has, you know, prices have gone sky high because there is really not enough shipping containers to ship goods, right? And on top of that, now with the Red Sea uh, tensions going on, which we didn't foresee as well, we thought it's just the Israel-Hamas war, but now it's spread out to other parts of the Middle East, right? And that is causing shipping liners not wanting to use the Red Sea and Suez Canal. So what do they do instead? They now have to go around the Cape of Good Hope in South Africa, which means we are facing price, pricing issues. It's going to cost more to ship our goods. It's also um, causing a shortage in containers in the world freight market. So geopolitical uncertainties were top of mind in 2023 and going into 2024. It's also caused protectionist issues. Companies, or rather countries, are becoming more protectionist. Uh, example which affected us directly was in terms of India and sugar, right? So they banned the export of sugar. What happened was in Malaysia, we supply sugar to our 20 over 1,000 workers who are working in our plantations. We couldn't source for sugar to actually supply the staple ingredient for them. So that was an issue. <clears throat> and finally, I think it's in terms of the economic uncertainty facing the world. Yeah, uh, Oil that we produce is a basic food staple. But with rising uh, prices, in terms of food prices, individuals can't even afford for you know certain things that would otherwise have been thought of as normal. For example, going to KFC or you know any kind of fast food joint which uses our oil to fry, right? But with increasing uh, food prices, this has become a luxury item. So our customers are facing issues as well. And all this was happening in 2023, and in fact from the point of COVID, and then when COVID started settling down, it was all these other pressures that are happening in the world. So, you know, many things happening in the world which are beyond our control, but we've had to develop strategies to mitigate these risks internally. Thanks, Kenzani. Okay, so let's talk about all the answers over here, okay? I would like to have all the panelists from the answers that you answer for the questions one. All right, so what will you keep an eye out for in 2024? Since there are a lot of risks in, in, in your business in 2023, so what will you do in 2024? I, I would say that to prevent that kind of incidents happen is that most of the time, the information is very important as the risk most of it is from insider trends. Like they know what kind of version of the firewall that your company uses, the software, the IT infrastructure, and etc. So this is the intended level we need to keep an eye on it, as it's very crucial. And I feel that it's very important that our services is like a, an early warning sign that can like a, we have a radar in the in a house somewhere. So to detect and bazooka, some sort of weapons to prevent it from happening. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. <coughs> Uh, before I deliberate that further, I know I want to do a quick check, if you guys don't mind. Um, those with Tabung Haji um, accounts, any of you have used Tijari? Mm. Is it good? Okay, okay lah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Tijari. Um, what we have is, imagine it's just like um, the port banking portal or the FI portal. You can check your balance, um, you can uh, take a look into your queue. Some people, they have to wait another 100 years, but continue to appeal. We just opened uh, last Friday. Um, and then the, you can do some of the things that you can't do in FI. Sebagai contoh, sedekah. It's a contribution. You can do that. Okay, imagine one fine day, that system, one fine day you open up the account, you're supposed to have uh, 100,000 ringgit. It's not left with 100 ringgit. 
If you are worried, I'm also even a lot more worried. It's true what James said. It's about the attack. I've been in banks, I've been in insurance company. Now I joined Tabu Haji, I thought the number of uh, cyber attacks will be lesser. It's not. It's the same. So my guess is uh, the attackers are getting smarter. Perhaps they will start attacking Simon soon. <laughs> the thing, <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Look. The thing is that the protection element has to be there. I need to make sure, for example, my friend there, Radwan, he will not call me, Sharif, why I'm losing all my money? I need to make sure that he's happy what he what he see. Of course, we have to uh, scrutinize when the people are uh, trying to cheat or otherwise. So, the probability, I'm not saying Tijari, everyone is using a computer, a portal. The probability of people stealing your identity is there. Let's face it, I can't find a human being now who does not use handphone, except my father-in-law, who's <laughs> practically just using a phone, you know, the one with, you, you press the button, he doesn't want to believe with the internet. He's the only one in my entire family. Even my uh, 78 years old father knows how to use MAE. It used to be Maybank to you. It tells you that, because we have seen some cases, somebody called Janet, uh, you owe some money with SPRM yeah. and suddenly they, after the 1000 call they managed to dupe this uh, unfortunate person and then they were, if you receive a tag number you have to give it to me and that person by some miracle give everything to the so called hacker or scammer whatever you call it and it happened I'm telling you and they realized ah MEE, you are linked to Tabo Haji, Tijari or whatsoever that is part of the problem and people make a, started to complain, make a press conference despite that the Tabung Haji should control the tech number for all of your information, we don't control tech we do link uh, our Tabung Haji account with CIMB, with Maybank, with some other bank partners the one that control the tech numbers are bank banks again, you cannot force the bank entirely when after deliberate uh, extensive investigation, it turns out that you surrendered everything. You're just giving the key. It may sound a bit weird, but it happened. A lot of the cases are, it's not simply, you know, this kind of Hollywood type cyber attacks. It's simply a telephone call. They scared you because the police are coming to home. You better just listen to me. So, the cyber security, the phishing, I don't know whatever names they call it nowadays. You just have to be careful. And in order to make people aware, alert, you have to educate them. When someone call you, don't just believe. As what Tabo Haji has been promoting, kalau curiga, jangan percaya. Some of you may have heard that in the radio. Okay, cyber security is something that whatever happened throughout the time, last year, last two years, tomorrow, ten years, I guess, we need to put the controls. How do we learn that? We look at number of attacks. We look at the incidences, which are the attacks that finally really beat the whole system. I don't know, but I guess some of the institutions may have faced something, some serious attacks. And while you thought it's, it's, it's a very complicated attack, more or less it's just a simple telephone call. How do you educate a vulnerable customer? In the past, we thought vulnerable customer is somebody age 80. We lower the age 70. We lower the age 60, we learn that some 70 years old are even better than 20 years old <laughs> when it comes to cyber security. Eh? Okay, um, that's one thing. Again, uh, being an institution that manages, as Jason said, retail customer, we have to make sure that the money are well protected. We also need to make sure that we invest um, well. We will not uh, put harm to their investment. If you have something in your thoughts about legacy of past investment, I cannot answer that question later. But what we can I tell you, we have a systematic, we have a strategic asset allocation, technical asset allocation. What we think is going to give a, a more responsible returns, but then again, the market. Who would thought that the war is happening now in the um, Middle East? I mean, Middle East has been at war for so many years. but. What is happening now is beyond a lot of people's imagination. And then, what about COVID? Will there be, don't know, whatever names coming? 
I never seen, I think that's the darkest day in the human's time. It's not even a war, but nobody can go to work. The implication, Sabu Haji has a lot of, not to say a lot, a lot. Sabu Haji has a stake in the rental building business. Those days, remember, everybody has to go to work. Then the environment started to introduce what they call work from home. What is, what is that fact for real estate? You know, the rental, and then a lot more companies, ah, this is a good idea. Instead of asking Shari to come office, we ask him to work from home. And he has the zoom. He just has to wear up, up, up the, the upper side. <laughs> so, that must have impacted the real estate business, one way or another. Something that you never imagine. I think 20 years ago, I really have to get into the bus mini. I better come to office. If I did not sign before 9 o'clock, two times I'll be in trouble. But the world has changed. So the way we, we look is also has to be changed. So what we do now, we have to do it differently. So um, the evolving, the evolving trees, while we hope we can come up with what we think is going to hit us, it's not going to be easy. Cyber security, investment risk, operational risk. We continue to have to deal with Arab Saudi. And we respect them. There are laws that we need to understand. And the expectation, everybody would want to perform on time. But there's only like 20, 30,000 accommodation for a 5 million Malaysia in queue. So that itself represents a challenge. Yeah. So uh, the risk associated with Hajj, which is very much operation, investment risk, IT cyber security risk. Those are things very closely connected to my mind. But it's a lot more than that. Okay. Thanks, Cheryl, and thanks, uh, Jason. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Cheryl. Um, you, you're looking for answers. Um, I'm, I'm not sure whether the correct terminology is answers or solutions or, or actually mitigants. Uh, being an, an FI, we don't we don't kid ourselves that we have the solution um, to the problem. Uh, touching on cyber security again. Uh, we we work with our own vendors, uh, companies like like James's company, um, and and we monitor. Uh, I, I I understand what you mean when you use the term radar, yeah, because we we try and watch everything that goes on. Uh, we even measure the number of attempts uh, by hackers uh, on on our website, for example. Even though we're not a commercial bank. Uh, Handling retail banking, you'd be amazed. Uh, there, there are lots of attempts. Hackers just just want to break into something, somewhere, somehow. Um, and in fact, uh, not to sound alarmist, but this morning I got an email from my CISO, who said that there is a hacker group uh, that is planning uh, uh, some kind of a hack attempt in Malaysia uh, this weekend. So so keep an eye out. Tell all your IT security teams to be on double alert. Uh, not sure what these guys are, are capable of. Um, and it, it could be for a variety of reasons. And this is why it keeps people like Sharil and Gajani and James you know, and myself up at night. Uh, I remember um, at, at uh, my previous company, um, our website got, got taken down. Um, as, as a form of a revenge by, by vigilantes. Uh, some of you may remember at um, the SEA Games where uh, we hosted, there was one event when one of the medal winners uh, was an Indonesian, and somebody, somebody mistakenly raised the Indonesian flag upside down. Because of that, there were vigilante groups uh, proud Indonesians, of course, who, who made hacking attempts. Uh, and my company, unfortunately, uh, was a victim. You know, so you go onto the website and, and it took people to an adult website. You know, um, so that's rather unfortunate. Did we do anything wrong? We, we did not. But we were a victim. We happened to be the chosen ones, you know. Um, so, Hack, hacking attempts are, are, are just random and they're happening every day. You know, after this you can pull James aside and he can give you numbers as to how how frequent you, you know um, hacking attempts are. 
so as far as answers are concerned, um, action steps I would call them. What, what we do is we make sure that all our software uh, uh, is updated, uh, our IT security people uh, are properly certified, they know what's going on, what's the latest in the market, um, and, and there's no let up. We, we have to watch what goes on. Any front-facing system, even though we're not a retail bank, even something like our website, right? It's, it's a 24-7 monitoring uh, kind of challenge. And for those of you, some of you who are in, in, in banks, you know what I mean. Um, not a single second goes by um, without knowing that, that you, know, you, need, you need to feel safe or reasonably safe. Yeah, we don't have a bazooka like um, like James mentioned. Um, for us, it's more preventive. And touching on on, on, on prevention, uh, I think it was something that uh, uh, James touched on as well when he talked about internal weaknesses. Um, and this is where not just cybersecurity, but but all other types of risks as as, as well. Communication and education that becomes very important. Because at, 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 at the heart of it all, the, 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 the essence of risk management is, is actually about mindset. Right? It, it, very often it is a people issue. So something that James touched on earlier, I, I can give an example. It's, it's something as simple as a sharing of password. Right? Um, and, and if I could give a, a real life example, there was like example of some, somebody who resigned from the company and he forgot to take away the password. That is such a rudimentary error which should not be allowed to happen. This, these things happen. Um, and phishing scams, that, that happens all the time. Um, regardless of the number of alerts and training and reminders that we send to our staff. Uh, so that, that, that never ends. Communication and education never ends. because. At the end of the day, you will find that there are many instances of lapses, security breaches, whether, whether uh, it's a cyber security breach or a physical breach, um, originates from human error. Right? So, so the philosophy of it all, to get people's mindset right, you have to communicate and educate everyone in your company um, about risk management, how you manage risk. Um, so if you're, you're a risk manager working in risk management department, you're handling all the risk dashboards, um, the methodologies, you're doing your job, but you're not really doing your job unless every one of your colleagues in the company understand, have the same level of appreciation on how to manage risk. Yeah. So that's, that's what I have to say. So Cheryl, yes, MW Plantation has been attacked as well by hackers. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but as Jason mentioned, it really is about people, yeah? the human beings who are in our organization and how vulnerable they are to such incidents as well. So again, I echo what my fellow panelists have said, it's about education and awareness. Um, I think the one constant about risk is the uncertainty. So whatever crystal ball gazing that we try to do, we can throw away the crystal ball. Because you know who could have predicted all the things that have happened in the last three years, right? Um, so for us, focusing on external risk events is very important for operations, given the, the breadth and geographic span of our company. Um, initially, we used to do an external risk review every quarter for submission to the risk management committee of the board. But we realized from the point we submitted our report to the board to <clears throat> two weeks later when the meeting actually happened, the risk in the world had changed. So we realized we can't be doing this thing quarterly. So we do a scan and we send out risk updates on world events and external risks to the board as well as to the, to the whole organization every two weeks via email because we need to be constantly vigilant of what's happening. 